So Final Cut Pro 10.6.2, Motion 5.6.2, and Compressor 4.6.1 have all dropped on the App Store. Now, as many of you already know, Steve has already done a video about two of the new features in the Final Cut Pro update, dupe detection and voice isolation. If you haven't seen that video, you definitely want to check it out. There's a link below. In addition, he's now released a new video on the new compressor features. Again, link below. What I want to talk to you about today is an additional enhancement to Final Cut Pro specific to the object tracker and a very cool new filter in motion. So if you've ever used Motion to create content for Final Cut Pro, you're going to want to watch this. Finally, I'm just going to ask you right now, if you find this content value, consider subscribing, click the like, and also leave us a comment. We'd really like to know what you think about this content and any of the stuff that we do. With that said, let's jump in. The object tracker introduced in 10.6 has a new UI improvement and a very useful new feature. Before, when you click the downward facing arrow next to the word tracker, all you could really do is select which track you wanted to apply. But now, in addition to selecting the tracker source, the track data to use, and by the way, you can now use this menu to apply any existing track data to newly added titles or graphics, or to add a new track. You can also choose whether you want to pin your tracked object to the tracker itself or offset it. And you can choose which parameters the tracker gets applied to. Before, you had to go to the video inspector and click at the top of the transform group to select those parameters, which you can still do here in 10.6.2. But it's great having them all available in this menu. The best part, though, is that you now have options for how scale is tracked. Previously, scale X and Y were always tracked separately, so that the tracked object would scale non-proportionally, which frankly, in my opinion, is kind of useless. But now, you can choose either fit or fill, which work much like fit and fill options for spatial conform, either fitting the tracked element entirely to the tracker grid or filling it entirely. Either way, you can adjust the scale further, either in the inspector or using the transform tool in the viewer. The end result is that now tracked objects will scale to the tracked source without distortion, which is awesome. In addition to performance improvements, especially on Apple Silicon Macs like the new Mac Studio, this motion update includes a deceptively simple yet very powerful new filter. First, I'm going to show you how it works. Then I'll show you three different ways to use it in Final Cut Pro. It's called Slice Scale, and you can find it in the library, in Filters, in the Distortion category. Or I prefer to select it from the shortcut menu up here. I'll apply it to this image of the red couch. By default, it creates nine slices with a centered rectangular frame. If you drag from the top control handle, everything inside the rectangle gets stretched vertically. Everything outside the rectangle remains untouched. Or I'll undo that. If you drag from the left control handle, everything inside the rectangle gets stretched horizontally, and everything outside the rectangle isn't affected. So the center frame sets the boundary on what gets stretched. I'll undo that. But most of the time, you'll want to adjust the size and location of this frame before manipulating the underlying image or video. So the first step is to go to the Filters Inspector and select the Edit Slices checkbox. You can now position and scale the rectangle freely. I'll move it so that vertically, just the cushions of the couch are inside it, and horizontally, just this middle section is inside it. Now I'll uncheck Edit Slices, and if I drag the top control handle, I can stretch the cushions without distorting the rest of the couch. Or I'll undo that. I can change the scale method from stretch to whole tiles. And if I hold down the Option key to include both sides and then drag on the left control handle, I get copies of the center section of the couch. It would be pretty cool if you could do this with real furniture. So let's see how we can use this filter to publish useful items for Final Cut Pro. Here, I've used a rectangle shape to create a curved talk bubble with a halftone filter added. If I wanted to have it adjust to different amounts of text, previously, I would have to scale it, which would distort the entire shape, including the halftone pattern. But now I'll enable the slice to scale filter. 
and if I select Edit Slices, you'll see I've adjusted the slices to include just the vertical and horizontal regions where the shape is not curved. So if I uncheck Edit Slices, I can now scale the slices either horizontally or vertically, and the curved areas, the pointer, and even the halftone pattern aren't affected. I'll undo that. I've added a link parameter behavior, which links the scale of the slice scale filter to the size of the text object. So if I enable it, the bubble automatically matches the text size. The align to behavior then makes sure the bubble is aligned with the text. If I now adjust the font size, the talk bubble scales with it dynamically without distorting. If I select the slice scale filter, I can use these expand parameters to adjust the amount of padding around the text. And if I select the project, you'll see that I've published those expand parameters as well as a few other parameters so that they can be adjusted in Final Cut Pro. So if we now go to Final Cut Pro and connect our talk bubble to a clip, I can double click to edit the text and the bubble resizes. I can change the font, the font size, and the margins, and reposition the graphic anywhere I like. Here's an example where I've tracked it to the clip underneath using the new scale options in the object tracker. Sweet. Back in Motion, here I have an image of a wooden frame that I'd like to be able to manipulate to fit composited graphics and video with different aspect ratios in Final Cut Pro. You'll notice how, as opposed to the talk bubble, I've adjusted the slice scale filter to have very large slices. There are two reasons for this. First, when stretching, it doesn't have to stretch as much, so there's less distortion of the grain pattern. Second, I'll undo that. The larger slices allow me to also shrink the graphic, both horizontally and vertically. In the inspector, you can see I've published the slice scales, scale and offset parameters, as well as the OSC, or on-screen control. If we go to Final Cut, here I have a picture-in-picture -picture that I'd like to frame. I'll connect my wood frame. And just as a reminder, before this filter existed, Clicking the Transform button and scaling vertically or horizontally distorts the frame so that the width doesn't stay the same. But if I undo that and instead use the on-screen control for the sliced scale filter, the width stays unchanged. Motion is also great for creating motion graphics that will work with timeline video in different aspect ratios. Here I have a photo of an old TV with a mask cut out to reveal the title background which will be the video clip in Final Cut Pro. When I scrub the timeline, the camera dollies in to frame the video. Notice that the aspect ratio is 4-3 to match this old TV set. But what if I want to fit an HD clip into this TV? Well, I've added the slice scale filter and set a small horizontal slice on one of these pattern items here. The vertical setting doesn't matter as I only want to make the TV wider without distorting it. Notice that I've set the scale method to whole tiles instead of stretch this time. So if I drag on a side control handle, I get copies of the pattern and no distortion on the rest of the TV. Now, I'll select the project and go to the project inspector to snapshots. This is where you create and modify display aspect ratio snapshots for Final Cut Pro. I'll select the 16.9 snapshot. Notice how the video placeholder is now wider matching the 16:9 aspect ratio of HD and UHD video. But the TV didn't change. So I'll click Edit Snapshot and adjust the slice scale filter to make the TV fit the wider video. Because I'm in Rig Edit mode, this change only affects this snapshot. I'll stop Rig Edit mode. And now when I scrub the timeline, the camera dollies in to frame the widescreen video. Now that I've set that up, in Final Cut Pro, if I apply this title template to video in a 4.3 project, it will match. And if I apply it in a 16.9 HD or UHD project, it will automatically adjust to the new aspect ratio and play correctly.
So again, we'd love to know what you think. Please leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.